Hey everyone, Suntide here. I hope you all are doing great right now. Uh, I definitely have been, in part because I've really been enjoying playing Rune Factory 5. Um, it's really, really good, and if you haven't played it, like, I recommend it. Uh, it's not perfect, uh, but no game really is, and it's just a really, really good time. But yeah, I, I just got to the point where I started experimenting with the crafting again, and I find it really, really interesting. Um, it's mostly similar to Rune Factory 4, like, you can do a lot of really similar things to it, but there are a few subtle differences that make it slightly more complicated and slightly different. Um, the main thing that inspired me is that I struggled a bit to make an accessory that has four abilities, because um, having multiple abilities can be really, really useful just for even general use, getting through the game. Um, I'll go through that with an example, actually. Um, so I made a magic ring, um, just for my own personal use, uh, which we can check if we can talk to Darek over here. And he's going to say, if I check my magic ring, that I have um, the abilities of a champ belt, happy ring, and heart pendant. So respectively, they increase my HP, they increase the item drop rate, and they increase the amount of skill points I gain, which are all just really, really good for playing through the game. Um, but it also looks like a magic ring with the abilities of a magic ring. So magic ring lets me like charge attacks faster, which is really, really good just for like farming or watering your crops. Um, but if you've only played Rune Factory 4, this slide's actually a bit interesting and different because they never used to say the accessories like had a different appearance. And that's the really, really big and interesting change that they made for Rune Factory 4. Uh, that you can actually change the appearance of your accessories, uh, which is nice and interesting, but makes crafting a bit more complicated. So in this video, I just want to explain how we actually craft these accessories that have four abilities. Um, but just to summarize some of the concepts we need to see first, uh, I have this uh, little diagram at the top, which basically says everything that goes into the final accessory you make. Basically, we have three things that just contribute extra abilities. We have one thing that contributes basically everything else, like the another ability, as well as stats and how the material upgrades when you add more materials. Um, I'll get to that later on. Uh, and also, one last thing that changes the appearance, and only the appearance. Uh, in Rune Factory 4, these two things were basically linked. Um, you couldn't change them, they were the same item. And that's what makes it slightly more complicated. Uh, so to make the explanation more simple, um, I've given these things names. So extra components are the things that contribute abilities and nothing else. Uh, so in this case, it was those three things we said earlier, the Chan Spelt, the Heart Pendant, and the Magic, no, not the Magic Ring, whatever else I was missing. Uh, the base is the magic ring, and the appearance is also the magic ring. So, knowing all this, how do we make our final accessory? Well, there are basically two main methods. Uh, method one is, I think, the slightly better one, uh, which I call the chaining method. And basically, it's a three-step process, which we're going to do right now. Uh, so step one, we want to craft the three extra components that add abilities we want. So, what extra components or abilities do we want? Um, I'm going to pick just some that I think are generally good for like general use again. Um, so that includes, for example, the uh, heart pen, if I can find. Oh, the happy ring. No. Okay, so this one increases my item drop rate. It's really good for general use. Uh, let's make the magic ring, which increases my charge attacks again. And then let's make the heart pen, uh, which increases the skill XP gain again. So that one is over here. So step one complete, we crafted our three extra components. Now step two is to craft the base using the three extra components. So the base again is the item that has all of the abilities added, but also all of the stats added. So the one we're going to use for that is something that has good abilities, but also better stats than all the other ones we saw earlier. Um, I think a good example of this is, for example, the star pendant, which is somewhere over here, star pendant. Uh, this one increases my XP gain, which is nice, but also has 33% love res. Uh, love res is just in general, well, resistance in general are really, really good in this game. So we'll make this one, and then we'll add the three extra components to it. So the happy ring, the magic ring, and the heart pendant. Uh, and then we make that. So at this point, I would save the game, uh, because this last step has a chance of going wrong, and we basically relies on luck. So at this point, I would save the game if I were doing it properly. Um, at this point, this is also how it would end if you were playing Rune Factory 4. Um, so if I equip this star pendant, um, we can see what happens when we talk to Derek. Um, he's going to say that um, 
I have the abilities of Happy Ring, Magic Ring, and Heart Pendant, which is what I expected. But then he's going to say that it looks like a Star Pendant, but has the abilities of Happy Ring. Uh, basically, this item has nothing of a Star Pendant except the appearance. So I don't get the increased XP gain, and I don't get the Love Res. Um, you can see that more easily if we just actually look at the accessory itself. Uh, we don't get that 33% Love Res. So it's not done yet. We need to do that last step. And again, that last step is to uh, craft the final accessory using the base. So we're just going to pick anything we think looks cool. Uh, what do we think looks cool? Let's say we're going to make a diamond ring. We're going to make a diamond ring, and then we're going to craft, the, put the base in. And remember, we should have saved beforehand. I'm just for the video. I'm just doing it quickly. Um, and then now the diamond ring is the appearance we want. We're going to equip it. We're going to talk to Derek, and Derek is going to say that the Diamond Ring has the abilities of the Happy Ring, the Heart Pendant, and the Magic Ring, uh, which worked out well because the appearance is that of the Diamond Ring with the abilities of a Star Pendant. So actually we had all five accessories work well, work perfectly, and yeah, so everything worked out well. We have the four abilities we want, we have the stats of a Star Pendant, and we have the appearance of the diamond ring. You can see here we have the 33% love res. So it worked out well, yes. Uh, so that's the first method. The second method is uh, slightly simpler, um, but has a bit more room for error. Basically here we wanna craft our components and our bases all separately, which I've done perfect in preparation for this video. So we're gonna use a heart pendant and these three rings that increase status effects. The idea being that like you can increase your um, skill XP gain pretty quickly from inflicting status. And then with step one complete, then what we do is we just craft the final accessory. Um, so we're going to pick again something that we think looks cool. Uh, let's this time craft the... Uh, let's craft the Aquamarine Bridge. I like the color blue. And then we're just going to put the four accessories we need. Now, what's really important here is that the base, the one whose stats we use, is always going to be the item in the first slot. Um, so, in this case, the base will be the heart pendant. If I swap these, the base will be the silent ring. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter, actually, just because they don't add any stats. But, yeah, if we did care about the stats, that's what would happen. But then, yeah, so we're going to do this. And again, this has a chance of going wrong. There's always a chance that the base um, is taken as one of the extra components, so we miss an extra ability. This is why we should have saved. And then we want to check with Barrett. Uh, if we talk to Barrett, we, sorry, Derek. If we talk to Derek, he's going to say that in this case, we have the Paralysis Ring, Heart Pendant, and Silent Ring as the extra components. And it has the uh, it looks like an aquamarine with the abilities of a heart pendant, which was the base, the first item we added in. Now, in this case, it didn't work. Uh, we missed one of the rings, but yeah, that's okay. We would have just reset it and tried again. Um, but yeah, so that's the second method. It's this one pot method because you all just put everything in like one crafting pot. Um, but yes, so very um, important and subtle point is that when we um, actually do our crafting, um, the first accessory we add when we're crafting is actually pretty important. Like the order actually ends up becoming pretty important. Um, so just as an example, let's say I'm making a charm. Um, so the base is always going to be the appearance of the first accessory we put in extra. So if we do this, the base will be a diamond ring. We will always have the stats of a diamond ring, no matter what we do. Um, we can have some extra components, so in this case we might have the extra components of the work gloves and also we might have any extra components that were in the diamond ring. Now this is only relevant if it is the first thing we add. Uh, if we swap these two, two items around, uh, we actually have a different effect. Here the work gloves will become a base and the diamond ring will be the well, has a chance of being the extra component. Um, any extra components that aren't part of the base, so right now any extra components in this diamond ring will actually be ignored. Only the extra components of the first accessory added, in this case the work glove, will be important. So yeah, so the order here actually matters. 
Uh, in short, make sure the base is always the first item uh, in this order, and then you'll be set. So we can always pick the base. The question is always what the extra components, what the abilities will be, and that relies on luck. And that's why you just want to make sure you save first before you do this. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically the main points uh, for Rune Factory 5. Um, if you're interested, there are still a few other differences in Rune Factory 4. So the one we've spoken so far is that um, the abilities and base, um, in Rune Factory 4, they are linked, they're dependent on one another. In Rune Factory 5, we can control them independently. So we can make an item that looks like a diamond ring, but doesn't have anything of a diamond ring other than the appearance. In Rune Factory 4, you couldn't do that. Uh, the other interesting thing is that the way the item upgrades um, in Rune Factory 4 depended on the appearance, and Rune Factory 5 depended on the base. Um, an example of that is that if, for example, in Rune Factory 4, we made, well, in either game, let's say we made a staff that looked like a sword. So we used a staff to make a sword. In Rune Factory 4, um, the upgrades would act like it were a sword, but in Rune Factory 5, the upgrades would act like it were a staff. Uh, basically, this meant that in Rune Factory 4, the appearance actually had a slightly weird quirk. Um, so if you kept upgrading with high rarity materials, in Rune Factory 4, you would increase the strength, uh, depend because it would look like a sword, and in Rune Factory 5, you would increase the magic attack, because the base was a staff. Um, effectively, this means that the appearance was important in Rune Factory 4, but in Rune Factory 5, the appearance, like, it doesn't matter at all. The appearance just changes the appearance and the name. And I guess if you're a weapon, it also changes, like, the attack string you use. But yeah, so the appearance is not important at all in Rune Factory 5, other than for the appearance. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically that. Um, so in conclusion, um, we can create custom, access custom accessories with up to four abilities by chain crafting by using a base, or we can just add everything into one pot in one craft. Um, compared to Rune Factory 4, uh, we have independent control over accessory appearance, so you can change how the appearance looks like without changing the stats or abilities but it does make crafting more reset heavy. Um, in general, I would use the chain crafting technique just because um, it gives you more control over the slots, like you can add extra items to extra slots and uses the same amount of crafting, but you can do either way as long as you remember to put the base in the first slot. But yeah, uh, with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, I'm near a thousand subscribers, so if you would like to subscribe, I would genuinely really, really appreciate it. Um, I'll make quite a few videos about Rune Factory 4, sorry, Rune Factory 5, um, usually about crafting, but probably about a few other interesting, like, texts and stuff that you'll see. Um, but yeah, so stay, stay tuned, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Thank you all again for watching.